Guys, today we're gonna to give you the step-by-step -step guide to building the ultimate organizational culture. For those of you guys that are building teams, building businesses, or leading teams, managers, leaders, founders, this helped us. We moved to Austin a year and a half ago, and we built an office from zero to 400 people coming to meetings our first year. And people say, well, how did you do that? And what was the culture behind that? And how do you build culture? So we've gotten so many requests on how we built our culture that we wanted to share. What are the 20 points that we've done here in Austin, Texas, inside of our insurance agency to build a large organization fast. Uh, number one, this is above everything, safety. High trust right, is the first element to a great culture. If people don't feel that they're safe, if people don't feel that they can trust you, that's the foundation of a friendship, of a relationship, and it's also the foundation of business. So what can we do to create a, safe, a, a, a safer environment in our office, okay? And we're gonna talk about some of the elements of what produces a safe environment here as we go. Number two, people need to feel cared for, right? People need to know that they, uh, that you care about them, that you care about who they are, their dreams, their goals, that you sincerely want the best for them, that you're sincerely invested into who they can become, that there is a vested interest in their future, that you see in their future, in that relationship, that you're committed to that relationship. So that's point number two. Point number three, they need to feel respected. If a person doesn't feel respected, that they are a partner, a player, a uh, contributor, uh, that they matter, they're going to take a back seat in that organization, in that relationship. Respect is such a huge thing. Uh, people want to know, hey man, I'm a partner to you. Doesn't, mess, doesn't mean we're equal. We're equal as human beings. We may not be equal in the business world because maybe I'm coaching you, mentoring you, you're new, it's a newer agent, but people need to feel that they're respected. That's such a big thing. If you, if you treat people different because they make more money down the road and you have a different level of respect for them because they make more money, you're never going to build people because if people don't feel that from the very beginning, they're not going to stay with you long term, right? So you could treat people uh, 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 differently down the road based on performance, but everybody needs the same respect regardless of that. Number four, they need to feel valued right? It's, hey, great. I respect you as a person, but I value your contribution. I value who you are. I value who you can be. I just had a conversation with one of our guys and he says, my life, it's changed since I came here. And I said, I can sincerely see that by the way. And I think you have so much value to give this organization that we need your spirit. We need you to perform because we need to be able to put you in front of everybody because that spirit that you have, that mentality that you have, man, we need more of that in the culture, in the office. And because of that, that person left with a smile on their face and man, I want to be a part of this. I want to do more. I want to give more. So when people feel valued, you're going to get more from them. And don't do this as a method of manipulation. Do this because it's the right thing to do. Value people. That's somebody's son, daughter, mom, uh, dad, uh, husband, wife, kid. That's God's child. Like value people and uh, you'll get more value from them. Number five, people want an environment of personal growth. They want personal develop. If, uh, personal development. If you're building a culture, right, share the books you read, videos, stories, coaching, uh, sales books, leadership. They want to grow as a person, overcoming fears, procrastination, right, v uh, dream vision. We'll talk about that here in a second, but share value with them. If I'm growing as a person by being in your environment and that culture is personal development, I'm going to keep attending that meeting. I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep wanting to be a part of the team, but I want to grow per uh, per uh, personally and professionally. Uh, next one, uh, challenge. People want to feel challenged. Uh, they want to be led. Uh, we all want to be the leader, right? But we love being led by somebody that's a stronger leader. We all want to be led. We're all looking for somebody that's ahead, somebody that's more seasoned, somebody that's more advanced, that can help us, that can guide us, that can mentor us. So you got to be that leader and you got to create an environment, right, where people are being challenged, where people are being pushed in the right way, where, where there's a positive pressure to go grow as a person because people know like, man, I got, I got more inside of me. I want to be in an environment that brings out that next version of me. Number seven, vision. People want to be a part of an environment where there's a bigger purpose, where there's a, a bigger goal, right? Uh, that we can do something collectively that we're chasing, that we're making a difference, that there is a significance to what we're doing, that there is, we're, we're going somewhere. It's going to matter. We're impacting society. We're going to make a difference. We're going to build something that's never been built before. This is going to be the world's greatest culture. This is going to be the world's greatest company. This is going to be the world's greatest team. This is going to be, this is what we're going to do. We're going to change Austin. We're going to impact the community. 
community. We're going to impact a generation. So there's got to be something that's a greater purpose that people want to be a part of. Number eight, encouraged to dream. It's, we're so logical that that culture that you're building, that environment needs to get other people to dream. That could be watching movies to get people to dream. That could be doing vision boards. That can be doing uh, helping people create affirmations. That could be selling the dream. That could be going to experience something that gets me to dream. We've done masterminds where we've rented mansions, $20 million homes, and we've done training events and then, a, and then an after party. Uh, we do that every single year where we'll rent a mansion and we'll bring our top 100 people and we're like, hey, what can we do for next year, right? So people want to see the dream. We rented Lamborghinis, uh, Ferraris, Rolls Royces, um, to, to help people get a taste of what that's like, you know? I remember somebody put me in a Rolls Royce before I bought a Ferrari, and I said, man, this makes me wanna upgrade my life, and man, what would it be like if I was able to do this? And that was a big one for me because I was driving an Infiniti G37 at that time, you know, that was a really nice car for me, but I had it for like five, six years, and I'm building my business, and, uh, and I had just paid it off, and I'm like, man, you know what? I got a paid off car, you know, which is a good thing financially. But I'm like, man, that next, I wasn't fired up to get in my car. I wasn't fired up to go earn more, do better, grow so that I can get that next. And as soon as I got a taste of that, I started to dream bigger. Next day, I went and bought a, a, a Z06 Corvette, okay? And, uh, and it was, anyways, getting off topic. But people want to experience what that dream looks like. People want to be stretched. People are very logical, and sometimes they need you to help them imagine or get a taste or see what that's what's possible next one fun we got to have a good time i love laughing i love the environment uh we'll do a warm-up in my office and anybody who's playing the role has to go do their best dance moves and then there's a few people that will like do it together and, and the energy the music it's insane people want to have a lot of fun so that's a huge one uh don't uh sometimes we think well man you know we just got to hustle we no fun no time for fun it's the opposite of that fun makes the hustle not feel like a hustle uh, so very important. Number 10, competition. People need a target. People need something that's a positive distraction in their life. It's a show. It's fun. People want to see who's winning, who's doing what. People want to see somebody uh, elevated. People want to see somebody recognized. So competition is a really big part uh, of getting people to do more than they would naturally do. People will work harder to be number one than they will work for money sometimes, guys. And, and that's a big part of your office. And I, I, for, for me, a long time ago, I was like, man, you just work hard. Like you have dreams, goals, financial things you want to do, like work hard. Why do you need to, why do you need competition? Very logical person. And then I saw the benefits of competition because I didn't come from a sports background. So if you're working in a culture where you have a lot of athletes, that you're probably experiencing that. And you know that if you're an athlete or a coach or whatnot, for somebody that doesn't come from that background, I had to learn the benefits of competition, how to create positive competition where it's healthy, the power of competition, and now we have a competition for everything all the time. We just had a push-up competition. We have a competition to go to Miami. We have a competition for uh, 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 tickets to the finals of games. We have a competition for taking your team and renting a, a mansion for them. We have all kinds of competitions. We have a competition for taking your, tree, uh, your team and spending uh, $25,000 on a shopping spree. There's all kinds of competitions that we have, a first two, a most wanted First two, like who's the first to do this? This is the record of who's done the most, right? So that's the, that's the most anybody's ever done. Who's going to beat that? So that's the power of competition. 11, support. People want to be in an environment where they feel like there are resources where they can have the right support, right? So one is personal development. You go grow. But the other one is like, hey, this environment helps you grow. So who are we bringing? What's the support staff? What are the support systems? If you need help, who can you go to? Who's here to help you? Very important. Support is a big one. Most people, the challenge when they get started somewhere and they don't have enough support, they end up leaving that business. High turnover. Number 12, an environment of EPR, encourage, praise, and recognize. Uh, the more you can encourage, praise, and recognize people, the more positive your culture is going to be and the more people that are going to want to be a part of it. Uh, we did something for one of our top guys. He's from Nigeria. He loves Burner Boy. The other day, he uh, hit a big milestone, Elvis Okafor. Uh, shout out to you, brother. And we got him a Burner Boy uh, signed uh, uh, disc of his uh, music, right? It was an autograph signed record, okay? Um, and he loved it. And then we surprised him with, man, guess what? We got you row one, seat one at the Burner Boy concert. And then he, the, the milestone, he uh, first wanted to do it in our organization. We got him a custom painting of him and his family for another thing that he did. So anytime somebody goes above and beyond, what do you do for them? right? Custom Nikes. What, what do you do? How do you recognize people? We have these, uh, uh, these seats in our office, uh, king and queen seats. They're two six-foot 
uh, high, uh, chairs like royalty, like a king, and our number one guy at every meeting sits at that seat, right? VIP, VIP, we, we create a VIP lounge in our office so we can, what, encourage, recognize people and say, hey man, you're VIP, we want you to be a part of this. So do whatever you can do, man, to create a, an environment, a culture of encouragement, praise, and recognition. Next one, creating culture, meaning that people want to be a part of creating culture. They want to be a part of that ideation, like, hey, what do you think we could do better? What do you think we should train on this week? What do you think we could do uh, uh, as an office? How can we bring more uh, energy? How can we grow the numbers more? What do we need to train on? Hey, how can we stand out? Hey, how can we be unique? Hey, how can we give people world-class experience when they come here? So they start giving ideas and creating this system, creating this solution, creating this culture. Now they're part of that culture. So involve people in this process. Maybe you do a meeting, you're like, hey guys, what kind of culture do we want to build as an organization? And you talk about that. Uh, next one, positive, high energy and attitude. Positive attitude and high energy. Uh, we are, the moment you walk through our doors, it's, good morning, what's up, how are you, what's up, brother, good to see you, man, number one, bam, bam, bam. You know, it's high energy, it's positive attitude. Whatever problems you have, it's not that we don't care about your problems, we do, we'll talk about that, we'll talk about how we talk about that, but the moment that you walk through the door, those problems stay outside in your car, at home, somewhere else, because everybody has their problems. So we want people to bring a positive uh, uh, attitude, a positive energy. Uh, we have something we call pregame, and everybody's fired up in pregame and it's not a uh, fake rah-rah it's genuine enthusiasm we're going to do something big as an organization high energy positive attitude extremely important if you uh, uh, tolerate anything less than that it will also become a disease in your organization so we have music we have a dj we have a hype guy that's really important make sure you have positive energy next one number 15 different roles and strengths so if you want to build a culture, you need to be able to identify what is this person's uh, strengths and, and how do we position them to where they're most effective. What's that person's strength? Man, they're, they're really good at greeting people. They're very kind. They're very welcoming. That guy, man, that guy's super intense. Okay, that guy's going to give that message. That person's going to greet the guest, right? So identify different people's strengths, talents, personalities, and place them properly in the right position. Next one, number 16, dealing with problems privately and effectively, okay? So we have a culture in our office, part of the culture again, where you say deal direct, we say deal direct or let it go. Meaning that if you have a problem, it doesn't go to somebody else, it goes to only the person you have the problem with and either you deal direct or you let it go. And you do not have the right to bring up old problems. You do not have the right to complain. You do not have the right to be a victim. You do not have the right to be negative. You do not have the right to use your challenges as a reason not to perform. So that is an expectation. That is part of the culture. And, uh, you know, gossip is such a big one where uh, uh, Shane was, we're talking, he says, you know, I notice in the organization there's no real gossip or problems in a uh, vertical, but sometimes there's horizontal gossip. How do you do that? Well, you let people know that, that that's not tolerated, right? You let people know, you, you teach this principle. I always tell my guys, those that gossip to you, gossip about you, right? So we just don't tolerate gossip, why? It's not a healthy thing. And a lot of people love gossip, especially if you grew up in a culture where you talk about people, like it's always people talking about other people. Uh, we don't talk about other people. Uh, I don't wanna hear anything about other people. I wanna hear about what you're doing, what we can do, how we can do better, and if there is a challenge, that person has to be present for you to even be able to mention their name. That's part of our culture. That goes back to point number one, which is creating safety. Then you look at uh, number 17, okay? Time outside of the office. We do a lot of stuff where it's, uh, hey guys, we're having a pool party. We just had a dinner at the house for a couple of our guys last night. And it's like, hey, I wanna invite you to a dinner at the home. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna have dinner together. We're gonna talk. We'll have pool parties. We're doing that coming up here soon. We'll do uh, uh, lake days where we'll take all the guys out on the lake. We'll do workouts together as a team. Let's go on a hike. Let's go run this marathon. Let's go do this, right? So it's a lot of activities. Hey, let's go play some basketball. Um, hey man, let's go canoe, right? Whatever you're into, let's go watch a movie together. This is a sick movie that just came out, but it's time spent outside. Maybe you're into cigars, wine, maybe you're massage, maybe you like to work out. Do things outside the office with people. That's where there's a personal bond that's developed. Uh, number 18, clear systems. Why is that important to create a culture? Because you want consistency. So you need clear systems and expectations on what we do, how we do it, when we do it, why we do it, 
If you're clear on those, and then you have to be consistent, right? Because we had something happen today where one of the guys wasn't there to bring up the music when they were bringing up the next speaker. And people said, hey, what happened to the music? What, you gotta be consistent. So one, what can we do? How do we do it the best? Uh, and then from there, okay, let's do it consistently where that becomes an expectation. So whatever you're trying to do as an office, whatever your system is, how do we greet guests? How do we do a tour? Uh, um, how do we do an interview? How do we do a presentation? How do we deal with a, an issue? You may say, what is having to deal with issues have to do with culture? If it's clear on how we do things, then everybody can handle that. Now everybody's elevating and that culture becomes a world-class organization. So get clear on your systems and your expectations. Do it right all the time, okay? Next one, number 19, Kaizen. This is a Japanese term on constant improvement. There's never a, 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 a situation that you can't improve upon. Uh, we're always looking at how do we get a little bit better? How can we get uh, more personable? How, how do we get better reviews? Uh, how do we provide better service? How do we connect with people? Uh, how do we create a better environment? How do we create a more positive environment? How do we make people feel valued more? And so it's constant and never ending improvement. There's always something you could do better. Uh, in everything, in your marriage, in your health, in your business. So that culture, by the way, is, hey guys, how do we do better? How can we improve this? How can we be number one? How do we recreate this? How do we do something nobody's ever doing? You know, and even when you're number one, like, okay, how do we compete with ourselves? And how do we recreate that? And how do we raise the standards of what number one looks like? And that's part of a culture where that constant, never-ending improvement becomes part of your culture. And lastly, number 20 is modeling leadership. Modeling the leadership you want the culture to have. You know, there's a lot of times where things are going wrong in our, in our lives. Uh, things are going wrong in our personal life or things are going wrong with business or you have a financial challenge or something's going wrong with your parents or something's going wrong with your kids or something. There's, there's challenges that you're facing. Somebody's not agreeing. Somebody's a, a problem. There's other issues going on. You're dealing with all these different pressures, uh, expectations and all these other things that are going on. You have to model the culture that you want other people to have. So people will look at certain people in our office and they'll say, man, that person's always on. That doesn't mean that that person feels like being on all the time. That person understands it's their responsibility to model the attitude, the habits, the behaviors that they want other people to follow. And so we have a high standard in our office that if you're a leader, right, you have to model that for everybody else. And that's part of the culture, right? What is the expectation in your office from leaders? That culture, if you can create this, the culture that you're building will eventually take on a life of its own. And in the beginning, you're gonna have to be all these different things, but what you'll see is that other people will start to come alongside you and start also helping you and starting to duplicate some of these things. And eventually the culture reinforces the culture but that's something that you have to build and I hope these points help you do it. We'll see you on the next video, guys.